SeaWorld has been around since 1964, but it wasn't until 1997 that they opened their first coaster. Since then, and especially over the last five years, they've started flooding their parks with coasters and other thrill rides. They have parks in San Diego, San Antonio, Orlando, and if you leave the US, also Abu Dhabi in Australia. These coasters come in all shapes and sizes, some elite, some not so much. But today, let's put all bias aside and find out which one is the tallest, fastest, longest, best paced, and rank them up based on prime ride time. These are the coasters of SeaWorld, by the numbers. If you're new to the series, prime ride time starts when the train starts to pick up speed off the lift and ends when it hits the final brakes. For launch coasters, the clock starts when the launch starts. Mid-course brake runs are left in, but if it slows the train down too much, it'll extend the ride time or hurt the pacing. With the help of Google Maps and the Pythagorean theorem, I'm able to take out the lift, station, and brakes from the overall length, so the number on your screen will not match what you see on RCDB. Also, some coasters cover the same track more than once, so that needs to be accounted for. Just to know, this will only include the actual SeaWorld parks, not the Busch Gardens or Sesame Parks that are also part of the SeaWorld chain. Also, for this list, I left off the water coasters. These have some coaster track, but they also have some water parts where the boat is moving very slow, and it's hard to compare them to a normal coaster. So that means all three Journey to Atlantis coasters in America, as well as Storm Coaster in Australia, had to be left out. In 20th place with 9 seconds is Super Grover's Boxcar Derby in San Antonio, a Zero Kitty coaster. San Antonio got the short end of the stick for their kids' coaster, this being a very simple oval with a little twist. Only 165 feet of track that it covers at 18.3 feet per second. That's dead last. It's also just over 13 feet tall and hits 14.9 miles an hour. That's almost last in speed, but there is one other coaster that's just as short. In 19th place with 12 seconds is SpongeBob's Boating School Blast in Australia, a Zamperla Gravity Coaster. These are so common, 46 around the world. You rise up 13.1 feet, which is tied for last with Super Grover. Dip down and hit 10 miles an hour, that's dead last. Rise up and go around a helix, and turn back into the station. That extra helix keeps it out of last place in length, finishing with 240 feet. Also, second to last in pacing at 20 feet per second. It's also weird to see Spongebob at a Sea World Park, but that's a different story. In 18th place with 16 seconds is Eel Racing Coaster at Abu Dhabi, a Zamperla Junior Coaster. This kids coaster is entirely indoors, a very trippy glowing environment, and it's not exactly a kids coaster, more of a family coaster. This is their 200 meter junior coaster, so it's 38.7 feet tall, that's 15th, hits a top speed of 24.9 miles an hour, that's third to last, and covers 654 feet of prime ride track, that's fourth to last. This is the best paced kids coaster, covering 40.9 feet per second and ranking 16th. It also ranks ahead of another major coaster that we'll talk about later. In 17th place with 23 seconds is Super Grover's Boxcar Derby in Orlando, a zero family coaster. Orlando's smallest coaster isn't that small. It rises up a tire propelled lift, 31 feet tall, which is 16th, diving down and maxing out at 28 miles an hour, 17th place. It also covers 650 feet of track. That's four feet less than Eel Racing Coaster in third to last, and third to last in pacing at 28.3 feet per second. In 16th place with 26 seconds is Emperor in San Diego, a B&M dive. Finally, we're done with the kids' coasters, and here's one of the most extreme coasters in the chain. This rises up 153 feet, diving straight down to 143 feet. That's 5th place, also tied for 5th in speed at 60 miles an hour. This does not have your typical B&M dive layout. Mainly, it doesn't have a mid-course brake run or a second vertical drop. It starts with a big Immelman, then goes into a series of low-to-the-ground inversions. That makes for a short track length not even 1,600 feet in 15th place. But without a mid-course and by staying low to the ground, it's all the way up at second in pacing, covering 60.7 feet per second. In 15th place with 31 seconds is Jet Rescue in Australia, an Intamin family launch coaster. You'll see that SeaWorld loves these. They're usually themed to jet skis or snowmobiles, and they serve as a family-friendly thrill coaster. This one starts with a tire-propelled launch, having another boost halfway through. This barely leaves the ground, it's amazing how it never really rises up at any point. So I have this with a max height of 20 feet. That's 18th place. Those tires get it up to 43 and a half miles an hour, 14th place. And as you can tell from the 31 seconds of ride time, it doesn't have much track, 1644 feet in 14th place. Still, 67 feet more than Emperor. It does keep its speed very well by never changing its height, finishing ninth in pacing at just over 53 feet per second. In 14th place with 38 seconds is Great White in San Antonio, 
a B&M invert. This was SeaWorld's first coaster, opening back in 1997, and it's your typical Batman clone. These aren't very big, but they're powerful, and even in the SeaWorld chain, it's pretty middle of the pack. It rises up to 108 feet, but its drop is only 81.2 feet. That's 11th, and its 50 mile an hour top speed is right in the middle and 10th. It's actually in the bottom half when it comes to length, just over 2100 feet and 13th, but it does fly through its course, 7th in pacing at 55.4 feet per second. In 13th place with 42 seconds is Electric Eel in San Diego, a premier ride Skyrocket 2. This is one that covers more track than it has, using a multi-pass launch. And by my count, it covers 1,255 feet of track. Still, one of the shortest SeaWorld coasters in 16th place. It rises up 150 feet and spirals down. That's tied for second place, maxing out at 62 miles an hour, which is fourth. The pacing is kind of surprising. All those slowdowns in the backward launch, the roll at the top, when the train stalls, it just kills the pacing, and this is all the way down at 17th, even behind Eel Racing Coaster, covering just 29.9 feet per second. In 12th place with 45 seconds is Pipeline the Surf Coaster in Orlando, a B&M surf coaster. Brand new for 2023, this is the first ever surf coaster, launching its riders up to 60 miles an hour, which is tied for 6. It doesn't have a real drop, but it still rises up to 110 feet off the ground. Good for 7th place. It's not a very long ride, but it holds its own, covering over 2,600 feet of track. That's near the middle in ninth, and despite the high elements, it still has solid pacing. 58.5 feet per second and ranking fourth. In 11th place with 46 seconds is Wavebreaker the Rescue Coaster in San Antonio, an Intamin family launch coaster. Here we go, another one of these. This one having 15 more seconds of ride time than Jet Rescue. It also sports 600 more feet of track, still only 12th place. It has two tire-propelled launches, getting up to almost the exact same speed as Jet Rescue. That's 13th place, but it does rise off the ground. 61 feet in 12th place. Jet Rescue does beat it in pacing. Wavebreaker slowing down on those hills. More than 4 feet per second slower and down in 12th. In 10th place with 49 seconds is Texas Stingray in San Antonio, a GCI wooden coaster. The first wooden coaster in the Sea World chain. This goes up a 96 foot lift and drops down 100 feet. That's 9th. Maxing out at 55 miles an hour, which is good for 8th. It has a very low to the ground second half, sporting a pretty good track length at over 2,700 feet. That's 6th place, and averages 56.4 feet per second, all the way up at 5th in pacing. In 9th place with 50 seconds is Manta in Orlando, a B&M flyer. This thing is big, forceful, and yet still graceful, going up in a 140-foot lift and twisting down 113 feet to the left. That's 6th place, maxing out at 56 miles an hour, which is 7th, and then slowing down to rise into a pretzel loop. It stays high off the ground in the first half, hits a mid-course break run, and then loses a lot of speed as it hits the second half. It basically scrapes the ground after that swooping turn over the fountain, and that's a good thing. It kinda has to. It covers nearly 2,700 feet of track, and it does it at 53.8 feet per second, both 8th place. In 8th place with 52 seconds is Manta in San Diego, a mock rides multi-launch. This is pretty much a family coaster, starting with an LSM launch and using an LSM boost midway through, only hitting 43 miles an hour, which is 15th. It doesn't have much of a drop. It does wrap around the rocks and dives down, only standing 30 feet tall but dropping 54 feet, that's 13th. It goes over an under footpass, very interactive with its surroundings, covering almost 2,500 feet of track which is 10th. And like I said, it's a family coaster so it's not going to break your neck. It's 47.7 feet per second is 14th. Tied for 6th with 54 seconds is Leviathan in Australia, a Gravity Group wooden coaster. Even though this is Gravity Group and Texas Stingray is a GCI, these look very similar. Leviathan has it in height, only 5 feet taller and ranked 1 spot higher in 8th. But Leviathan is listed with 5 less miles an hour, tied for 11th. Leviathan has a twisted layout of crossovers. It's also longer, covering 53 extra feet of track in 5 more seconds. That's 5th place. But no surprise, that's not good for its pacing. Stingray has it by over 4 feet per second. Leviathan coming in 10th place. Tied for 6 with 54 seconds is Steel Eel in San Antonio, a Morgan Mini Hyper. It may be small for a Morgan, but it's pretty big for the SeaWorld chain. It's tied with Electric Eel in height at 150 feet, both ranking second. It's also tied for second in speed, clocking in at 65 miles an hour. It has a long layout of big airtime hills, a mid-course, and small airtime hills, covering over 3,000 feet of track and good for fourth. That mid-course does no favors for its pacing, slowing the train down but gaining back most of it because it's so high off the ground, coming in sixth at 56.1 feet per second, just barely behind the other star coaster in the park, Texas Stingray. In 5th place with 55 seconds is Arctic Rescue in San Diego, an Intamin family launch coaster. The last one of these, this is by far the longest in terms of ride time, 9 seconds more than Wavebreaker and 24 seconds more than Jet Rescue. I have it with 200 more feet than Wavebreaker, that's only good for 11th. 
It starts with a rolling tire launch, and it doesn't seem to be very powerful. It maxes out at 40 miles an hour, that's 16th, and it only gets about 30 feet off the ground, which is 17th. It's a long ride, but it's not intense and it's not a stat monster. Taking all that time to cover not that much track, it's 15th place in pacing. The only ones behind it are the Kitty Coasters and Electric Eel. Tied for third with 57 seconds is Kraken in Orlando, a B&M Floorless. This is a major 7 inversion floorless coaster, the standout in Orlando for so many years after it opened in 2000. It stands 149 feet tall, drops down 144 feet, that's 4th place, maxing out at 65 miles an hour, that's tied for 2nd with Steel Eel, and it goes into big inversions, an Immelman, 0G Roll, Cobra Roll, hits a mid-course brake run, and finishes off with a vertical loop, a big swooping turn, and a corkscrew. That all covers 3,370 feet of track, good for 3rd. And even with those big inversions and mid-course brake run, still 3rd in pacing at 59.1 feet per second. Tied for 3rd with 57 seconds is Icebreaker in Orlando, a Premier Rides launch coaster. Another coaster that covers more track than it has. It's listed with 1,900 feet, but is said to cover 2,750 feet. Launching backward, forward, backward, and forward again, hitting a max speed of 52 miles an hour, which is 9th. Going up and over a 93-foot top hat, that's 10th. Then going into an airtime-filled twisted course that seems kind of short. But when you consider the back and forth at the start, it's one of the longest rides in the SeaWorld chain in terms of time, and 7th place in length. Like Electric Eel, the stallouts are bad for pacing. The train slows down and stops, then starts slow before picking up speed. So this is down at 13th in pacing, less than a foot per second behind Wavebreaker. In 2nd place with 64 seconds is Mako in Orlando, a B&M hyper. SeaWorld has never had a project like this one, standing 200 feet and clearing the rest of the field by a full 50 feet. At the bottom of that drop, it hits 73 miles an hour, 8 miles an hour ahead of Kraken and Steel Eel. As per all B&M hypers, it's got a lot of track length, using an L-shaped layout before the mid-course breaks, ending with a low-to-the-ground twister section, covering over 4,100 feet of track. The next closest coaster is 525 feet away. To make it a clean sweep, Mako covers 64.3 feet per second, even with those big camelbacks, it keeps its speed, beating Emperor by 3.5 feet per second. In first place with 69 seconds is Manta in Abu Dhabi, an Intamin multi-launch. A lot of eyes have been on this one, opening with its park back in May of this year, and this has a dark ride section I didn't even count in the ride time. It has a sprawling layout, wrapping around the main Sea World building, covering almost 3,600 feet of track and ranking second. It doesn't have a drop and I couldn't find a height stat, but it seems like it hits around 50 feet, and if that's the case, that's only 14th. It has an LSM launch, and then two other LSM boosters, hitting 49.7 miles an hour, which is 11th. Its pacing is also pretty moderate, 52 feet per second, which is also 11th. This has four inversions, a mess of elements, and it looks like a lot of fun. In the end, you can't argue with 69 seconds of ride time. That's a wrap on the coasters of SeaWorld, by the numbers. Let me know if anything here surprised you, or confirmed something you already knew. I figured Emperor would have very good pacing, having no mid-course and staying very low to the ground with all those inversions. But staying in the same park, I was surprised that Arctic Rescue was so tame, even compared to the other Intamin family launch coasters. This opened this year, and I haven't been back to San Diego since 2022, so I hadn't ridden it or even seen much of it. So I was surprised how long the ride is, but also how slow it moves through its course. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like. And if you're new here and want to see more content like this, please give me a sub. I have a playlist with other videos in this series. Also, check out my links below for my Discord server, and my second channel where I post copyright free off ride footage, and my baseball channel if you also happen to be a baseball fan. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.